In 1995, Marvel released a crossover story called Age of Apocalypse, which has gone down in history as one of the comic giant's most memorable events. In it, Earth 616, the main continuity of the Marvel Universe, is briefly replaced by Earth 295, which all began when a psychotic mutant named Legion travels back in time to kill Magneto in order to prevent his crimes against humanity. Legion is the son of Charles Xavier, and when he goes back, instead of killing his father's biggest rival, he ends up killing Daddy Dearest instead by mistake. With this as the catalyst, a lot of things go haywire on Earth 295, and it's made for some of the most beloved stories in the history of the X Men comics. So today, we're taking a closer look at the crossover with our list of the top 10 shocking Age of Apocalypse facts. In at number 10, Altered Timeline. For starters, let's talk about the timeline. When Legion kills Charles Xavier, it drastically changes the way events pan out in the timeline. Without Professor Xavier around, Apocalypse attacks 10 years sooner than he does in the original 616 timeline, with him succeeding and taking over the Earth. Magneto leads a mutant resistance and sends Bishop back in time to prevent Xavier's murder, ultimately undoing the timeline altogether, thankfully. What else? Well, Magneto actually forms the X-Men in this reality, just as Apocalypse begins his war. But they weren't as coordinated as Xavier's X-Men were, and therefore in North America defenses who stand up against Apocalypse and his horsemen are seriously lacking. In addition to that, many of our beloved heroes outside of the X-Men are killed or just cease to exist. As for humans, well, Apocalypse initiates something called cullings, mass genocide of humans that leaves millions of them dead. Ugh. And at number 9, Magneto and Rogue. Age of Apocalypse has many weird and twisted moments, but perhaps one of the strangest events to occur in its narrative was that Magneto and Rogue shacked up. The two got married and had a kid. So let's jump back for a second. When the storyline starts off, Gambit and Rogue are still a couple. Gambit, hoping to find a way to physically touch Rogue, brings her to Magneto for help. Of course, the magnetic mastermind is able to find a way to touch Rogue via creating a microscopic field. Now, touch is kind of a big deal for her, so having the ability to get physical with her made Magneto hella appealing. But that's not all. Scarlet Witch, aka Wanda Maximoff, Magneto's daughter, would receive a fatal injury in the series, causing her death. But she was not entirely gone. A piece of her mind was within Rogue, and Wanda had requested that Rogue look after Magneto as her dying wish. So it actually kind of feels a little bit weird because of that, because there's a piece of his daughter in her and they're boning. Rogue eventually breaks the news to Gambit, who then sulks away, lamenting on how it's time for him to be alone again. Huh? I don't feel bad for Gambit in this case. Pretty important in Age of Apocalypse. Moving on to number 8, Prequels Galore. For almost 10 years, Earth 295 was considered to be a dead reality, but Marvel still took advantage of its popularity and published a variety of prequels that took place in that timeline. Blink, a character who would end up in the 616 timeline, more on that later, would have his own prequel solo 4 issue miniseries that was primarily set in the negative zone. X Man, the series that had initially replaced Cable during the Age of Apocalypse event, returned as a prequel, depicting a younger Nate Summers. There was even a prequel that followed Corsair, aka Christopher Summers, Scott's dad, returning to Earth to be reunited with Scott and Havoc, aka Alex's brother, titled Sinister Bloodlines. It wasn't just prequels though. An X Men Age of Apocalypse one shot would come out in 2005, followed by a six issue limited series. Speaking of, in at number seven, the limited series. In 2005, that limited series called X Men Age of Apocalypse was released, which took place a year after the events of the original Age of Apocalypse. But it seemed to retcon on much of the damage the world had taken in that initial story, giving readers a USA that felt very similar to the Earth 616 version. Magneto, who is the acting director of Mutant Affairs, is working to take down any surviving mutants allied with Apocalypse, while Weapon X, aka Wolverine, roams Canada, murdering off any of the villain's old allies and followers. Throughout the series, it's revealed that Jean Grey is alive as well. You'll see in a bit why that is like not really, you know, okay. But you know, maybe that's just a subjective opinion. And at number six, murderous. Age of Apocalypse transforms many of our favorite heroes into murderous villains of sorts. This includes Cyclops and his brother Havoc with the latter being far worse than the former. The brothers worked under Mr. Sinister at the breeding pits. Guess what those are. <laughs> and Havoc was known to be utterly psychotic. He would actually go on to murder not only Jean Grey, but his own brother, who he had a deep-rooted jealousy of, only to be ended by Weapon X, aka Logan, by the end of the story. Colossus also does some pretty messed up stuff too. When Magneto's X-Men storm Apocalypse's stronghold in an attempt to retrieve their captive leader, and also create a massive diversion, Colossus loses his cool, big time. His sister, Ilya, 
Rihanna plays a big role in this. Now, for context, in the Generation Next series of the story event, we follow a team of young mutants trained by Colossus and his then wife Shadowcat. Magneto sends the team to go rescue Colossus' sister, who has a very special power. She's the last surviving transdimensional teleporter. Magneto intended to use her in order to send Bishop back in time to prevent the timeline from occurring. But during their siege on the stronghold, Colossus loses his crap over potentially losing his sister, which results in him going on a murderous rampage during the battle. Iceman attempts to get him to chill out, pun fully intended, but Colossus smashes him to smithereens. Then, when Kitty Pride, aka Shadowcat, his wife, tries to talk him down, she steps in his way, believing that he won't hurt her despite Gambit's warnings. And Gambit was right. Colossus ends up killing her. So then Gambit has to put him down. Up next at number 5, Sugar Man. Speaking of Ileana, the mission in which Generation Next attempt to go save Ileana results in a bunch of casualties. Colossus essentially ditches the entire team, leaving them for dead. But none of them are ever to be seen again. Oh, at least, you know, until like 10 years after the fact and retcons and whatnot. There's a whole thing about it. But let's talk about Ileana's captor here for a sec, the Sugar Man. The Sugar Man is anything but sweet and delicious. He is a disgusting monster-esque creature who has been keeping Colossus' sister as his slave. He is a unique creation to Age of Apocalypse, having first appeared in Generation Next issue 2 back in April of 1995, and he likes to regularly torment his human slaves. A student of Mr. Sinister, he's a geneticist placed in charge of the Pacific Northwest's human slave camp called Seattle Core. One of the young members of Generation Next, Mondo, is personally killed by Sugar Man during their rescue mission. Actually, quite a few of them are. But that wasn't the last that we would hear of Sugar Man, unfortunately. We're on him in a bit. Moving on to number four, Psylocke. Pretty much every major X Men character appears in Age of Apocalypse, except one. Psylocke. While she would later appear in the 10th anniversary X Men Age of Apocalypse issue 4, the character was completely absent the first time around, and there has never been any indication as to where she was, who she was aligned with, etc. Now, we do know that she had some sort of past connection with Wolverine, aka Weapon X, of that reality, but it's still a big mystery as to what the mutant was up to during that time. Psylocke was introduced as one of Apocalypse's horsemen, though, in the Fox feature film Age of Apocalypse, played by Olivia Munn. Up next, number three, Cyclops and Wolverine. During Age of Apocalypse, there were various different titles during the story event that came out to replace ongoing X Men titles for a brief period of time. Now, one of these included Weapon X, the name of Wolverine on this Earth. Weapon X would briefly replace the Wolverine series during the event. Now, in this reality, Logan and Jean Grey are lovers, working for the Human High Council, the leadership of remaining humans. The Council wanted to bomb the crap out of Earth, something that the two opposed. Anywho, Mr. Sinister, one of Apocalypse's servants, gets the idea that he can create a mutant powerful enough to defeat Apocalypse by using Jean Grey's genetic material and combining it with Cyclops's, who is also an agent of Apocalypse. Jean is then captured, so naturally Weapon X goes to rescue her. But in the process, he encounters Cyclops, which results in one of the most brutal fights that these two rivals have ever had. Logan loses a hand, and Cyclops loses an eye. Once a rival, always a rival. And at number two, out with a bang. You know how we mentioned the Human High Council earlier? Well, they're a fun munch. In contrast to Magneto's X Men, the extermination of all mutants is totally a viable option for them when it comes to getting rid of Apocalypse. And they also supported the Human Underground Resistance, although secretly. Anywho, the Human High Council decides that they are going to be rid of this threat by bombing the crap out of the planet with nuclear bombs. Fun. Their plan is to get Jean Grey to hold these nukes back just below orbit. But before she can do that, she's killed off by Havoc causing their plan to backfire, just as Bishop is about to correct the timeline and stop Legion from killing his father. This pretty much destroys the timeline altogether, with the series ending with Magneto, his son, and his wife Rogue watching the incoming blast, eventually being incinerated within the glowing light. And finally, in at number one, Timeline Escapees. Despite the timeline being destroyed, some of the characters from Earth 295 managed to get out of that timeline, jumping ship to another. Well, the main continuity of Earth 616. Now, this includes Sugar Man, unfortunately, who, during the climax of the series, would shrink himself down, one of his abilities, and pop himself into Colossus's boot, waiting for the opportunity to get the hell out of there. Dark Beast, an evil version of Beast, escaped, along with Blink, Holocaust, and Nate Gray, the Earth 295 version of Cable. Nate would go on to die briefly after teaming up with the X Men and Spider Man, but was eventually resurrected, becoming a member of the New Mutants. Blink would go on to lead the Exiles team, hopping around different realities. And Sugar Man stirred up some trouble, of course, having helped the nation of Ganesha become powerful by enslaving mutants. And Dark Beast was sent 20 years into the past of Earth 616, a fact that was later used in retcons in order to have him be the one who created Morlocks. He would go on to join Norman Osborn's Dark X Men and seemingly die, only to reappear during the 2017 Secret Empire story arc. 
All right, there we have it, friends. What do you think were the strangest moments in Age of Apocalypse? Do you ever think this is a storyline the MCU may try to tackle? Give us a shout in those comments below and let us know all of your thoughts and feels. If you dug this video, spread the love, hit that like button, and be sure to subscribe to Top 10 Nerd for all things Marvel and comic book related. In the meantime, though, thanks for watching, friends. I'll catch you on the next one.